All right guys, it's currently about 8.30 in the morning. Uh, just came back to school for about two days. Um, and the main reason I came back is because my drone actually got fixed. You may have heard talk about, heard me talk about it in like my second vlog in which I said like I crashed it and so I sent it in for repairs. It took like a, took a while to fix. Um, and yeah, I guess I was kind of slow with it, but whatever, that doesn't matter. It's back now and it's coming in today. I didn't want to leave it here, kind of just sitting. Um, so yeah, came back to get that also because I kind of wanted to do some drone footage at home. So I'll be able to do that once I bring it back home. Also, I have physical therapy and I just wanted to vlog today. And uh, yeah, so I'll take you guys through my day a little bit and you guys see what's up. All right, guys, just got back from physical therapy. Um, got my lower back checked out. I actually got my running form analyzed and recorded. Uh, just like a, another way, a potential way I could be preventing like lower back problems just to correct the form. Um, so I actually got that recorded, like I said, and I kind of want to show you guys that. So I requested the footage and it takes about one, one week to get it. Unfortunately, the IT guys are pretty slow, uh, unlike me. Uh, however, um, I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm going to go work out now at the ARC, which is just the school gym here. My pre-workout is going to be uh, uh, coffee, kind of just steering away from heavy stims at the moment. And also, um, this is Legion Forge, this is a pre-workout fat burner. Um, it has your hem bind and HMB. And uh, so today I actually fasted for the breakfast portion. So when I, when I, my plan is the next, starting this Monday, in the next six weeks, I'm gonna do like a mini cut, um, just to kind of uh, regain the kind of good shape that I was in beforehand, before I kind of took a leap off of training. But uh, yeah, um, I'm taking that fat burner because um, you hem bind only works when you're fasted. Um, and I'll talk about more of that when I do, um, the cutting process but when i do cut i do intermittent fasting so that's just kind of me getting preparing now for kind of when i go on a caloric deficit um just to be kind of in the mindset that i'm only going to be eating in this eight hour window um and i'll talk more about that later as i said but yeah great great um fat burner supplement and uh the one last thing i'm going to take is dmaa if you don't know what that is you're probably better off knowing not what it is but uh super stimulant definitely good for deadlifting so yeah um deadlifting today along with the back accessories i'll see you guys at the gym Alright guys, so this is going to be the first footage I record of me deadlifting. Um, so in the past week uh, from when this was recorded, I think I've deadlifted maybe twice. So once in the previous vlog with uh, Nick, I just did like two or three sets. I think I worked up to like 275 for six reps. And then um, the next kind of pull day, I actually did uh, the David Lay DUP program and just started the program then for the deadlifting portion. And obviously this is going to be my second kind of working the program. Uh, doing the deadlifting and so my plan moving forward is with the DUP program is to do the top set um, Sumo style and that's you can see me here warming up for that <clears throat> and then the back off sets to be conventional and the reason for that is I've always preferred sumo um, However, the back off sets are good to do conventional because it kind of activates your back more and kind of gets more of your Spinal erectors working and I want to work those especially now that I'm having lower back problems I want to strengthen that area. I want to move away from kind of sumo, which works your legs a little more. Obviously you have a lot of quad driving involved um, to more working my back. And so another thing to think, to keep in mind is that how you're pairing up your big three. Obviously, as I said before, um, I am switching to low bar squats. And so low bar squatting um, is more posterior chain um, and uh, as well as sumo deadlift. So kind of pairing the two together kind of Maybe not necessarily won't hurt you, but it kind of maybe may might delay your progress uh, because you are working the same areas and if you're squatting twice a week, deadlifting twice a week, that can be really hard on your posterior chain. Obviously, the goal is to be consistent as consistent as possible for around nine weeks before you have to deload. So yeah, that's just kind of my thinking about it. Um, and uh, obviously, the conventional deadlift uh, doesn't work your posterior chain as much, but more so your back. And uh, less of your legs. So my warm-up sets are going to be 135, as you saw there, for 10, and this is followed by 225, um, 225 for 8, I think it was. And so, kind of one thing to mention about the difference between sumo and conventional is obviously mostly it's going to be your your where you grip the bar and the the width of your stance. So obviously sumo is a lot wider, and the, the range of motion because of that is a lot shorter, and you're gripping very narrow 
in between your legs. Um, but a lot of the cues uh, for performing the lifts are going to be kind of the same. You always want the bar to be over mid mid foot, and then you don't want the you don't want to be any further away because then you're just going to be wasting energy, kind of pulling the bar towards you as well as upwards. And so there's a lot of equipment that I recommend for deadlifting. As you can see here, I'm putting on a belt, and this is a prong belt. Uh, I think it's the Rogue Ohio lifting belt. Um, it's a pretty nice belt. It's on the upper tier in terms of belts. Um, I've always preferred a prong belt. I haven't really tried the, the clip ones where they're kind of just one size. Uh, and that's because thinking ahead when I did buy it, I was thinking ahead of when I do cut in bulk and obviously you kind of gain a little bit of weight, lose a little bit of weight. I want it to be adjustable and not have to be too tight or too loose um, because obviously I, pr I prioritize my back and uh, its safety in those situations. So this is 315. I think I did it for five or six. Um, as you can see kind of just with the form my hips kind of shoot up first and then my kind of the last like maybe core of the lift it's kind of like almost like a pulley like i'm just pulling my back up from like 75 degrees to 180 to 90 sorry um so that's kind of bad because obviously that means my hamstrings and uh my my glutes are, are tiring out before my back and obviously that can cause back issues and uh, injury um, and I think the reason for that is just because, as I said before, I've been doing the sumo, not, sorry, not the sumo squat, the low bar squat, and uh, that's kind of affecting my hamstring. And just getting back into things, I don't have my endurance that I used to, and my recovery rate is a little bit off. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just partially why I would explain. Obviously, I need to rework kind of the motor pathways and get my form back down again. Um, but these are all things that kind of contribute to your lifts, and uh, always some things to think about for yourself. Um, I always do recommend recording your lifts and uh, just kind of see your form at least. Um, just use your phone or whatever because you do get to see things that you might not have noticed, obviously. Or, um, yeah, even if your friends tell you things that you might kind of you might understand them, it's just better to see things for yourself. But anyways, here is another clip. You just saw me putting on knee sleeves. And our knee sleeves are another piece of equipment that I recommend. These are the SBD knee sleeves. Um, they're pretty long, so they work really well for deadlifting because they do cover a large portion of your shin. I use like um, the calf socks and then above that is the knee sleeve. So it pretty much covers up all the way to the below, uh, just below the knee. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of area exposed um, with my shorts, but uh, not too much. And I always recommend knee sleeves for both squats and deathlifts. You don't want to have to have any extra knee pain, especially as you get to higher weights. Um, and obviously you don't want to cut up your shins either. Now here is me pulling conventional. Um, so some of the cues again are just bar over midfoot, um, and the difference with this is that obviously now my sh uh, my legs are only shoulder width apart, and my arms are going to be just outside of that. You don't want to kind of add any extra space between your uh, legs and your arms because you're just going to be wasting energy. And um, yeah, that's more like a snatch, I guess, when you think of it that way. But uh, yeah, other cues are as you can see, I kind of try to like flex and pull the slack out of the bar before I do the actual lift. You'll see that a little bit more in the next clip, I believe, which is coming up right now. This is a different angle. Um, oh yeah, there's another thing. Uh, here's the chalk that I use, er, and it's just chalk, but whatever. Um, I prefer to do uh, over under grip, so I don't necessarily like straps because it does change the lift a lot, and that's just weird for me. Um, so I prefer the over under method. Um, which is good and bad because a lot of people think you can take your bicep by doing that, but I haven't had any problems yet. Um, and yeah, especially with chalk, I think it just works really well. Uh, a lot of people like the hook grip, which I haven't really looked delved into yet, but um, that's something to keep, also keep in mind when you're deadlifting. Um, as you can see here again, I don't know if I'm just being super critical or not critical enough, but it looks like I'm kind of just like pulling with my back for the last quarter. Like my legs and uh, hips kind of just shoot up and complete the lockout before my uh, back does and so it kind of just looks like I'm pulling my shoulders back for a little bit and uh, I do notice that after this lift I was pretty sore in the lower back um, and as you can kind of see here my legs started shaking that's like this is an indication that my hamstrings and legs are getting out before my back and uh, yeah so I think I finished up with uh, 315 which shouldn't be a lot because I'm used to this, like kind of pulling over 500 um, for both styles actually um, but yeah this is just going to be the end of the workout because I actually um, wanted to get back home for my drone. I didn't do any back accessories. But uh, yeah, kind of nice to get back into deadlifting. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about form. One thing I did want to mention here is you can, I just, I, conventional in general, I'm just kind of tight with. You can see my, my butt is really high up in the air. And that might be also contributing to the fact that my back is pulling more than my legs. 
Uh, yeah, all these cues are very important to deadlifting. Just keep it in mind when you are deadlifting yourself, and uh, never avoid deadlifting because it's an awesome lift, and uh, the form is just one part of it. Alright guys, so I just got back from the gym. I actually cut my workout short because UPS, I got a text from UPS that said the package was out for delivery in transit and I thought that meant like it would be here like within whatever amount of minutes. Um, I think that just meant like it was on the UPS truck for the day because it said it left at 8.30 unfortunately. Misread that, so I did my deadlifts and cut my workout there. Um, either I'll go back later today to do back hypertrophy or just do it tomorrow which is normally going to be my rest day. Um, but I just realized that I didn't eat dinner last night and like I said this morning I've been fasted. So I've been actually fasted since like almost 24 hours now, I'd say. I don't know when I ate last yesterday, but anyways, I went to Chipotle and got uh, two bowls. Um, now, Chipotle is one of the few places I'd recommend going out to eat if you are kind of like trying to get that lean physique or just really any physique. Um, obviously, like there's a lot of garbage food when you go out to eat, so um, when you're looking for better nutrition and um, better macros, definitely Chipotle is one of the places I'd recommend. Um, I would recommend cutting out like fats. Uh, just to keep the calories low or if you guess if you need the calories then add in sour cream guacamole whatever you need and obviously guacamole is gonna be healthier than like fries in terms of nutrients and stuff like that so I definitely recommend it also has a lot of flavor I love Mexican food even though it's not necessarily real Mexican food um, and yeah so I got two bowls just gonna kind of refeed myself and uh, gonna clean up because it's obviously a mess around here and then edit the last video uh, I took and then that will be up and then hopefully by then at some point the drone will be here and go out get some footage for you guys if not in the next video and then yeah I'll take you through the rest of my day after that see you guys in a little bit all right guys I already opened I already opened the package the UPS guy came and just couldn't really hold my excitement so I opened the package but yeah this is my drone this is the DJI uh, or Digi I guess Mavic Air um, it's pretty it's pretty small if you compare it to let's see I don't know my S9 it's like the body at least is about the same size and so that's pretty convenient um, obviously for traveling and stuff like that and it still shoots like 4k at 30 frames per second and then obviously 1080p at higher frame rates so um, it's a really good drone especially if you're kind of into traveling um, and it's on the cheaper sort of end of things like compared to like the normal Mavic it's like $200 cheaper and then obviously compared to the Phantom 4 Pro it's like $700 cheaper so something to keep in mind if you're interested in drones um, it's still really high quality though obviously all these drones are really really high quality um, no matter what you get from them uh this company dji and uh yeah so i'm gonna get some footage for you guys that's probably gonna wrap up the vlog uh one thing i do want to mention is after i kind of just drone i'm gonna be doing a twitch stream so if you're into any sort of gaming and stuff like that um uh, you, you can follow me on twitch if that's your thing uh, i don't twitch as much as i do youtube but it's something i do from time to time cool time to ask questions about really anything and uh see me kind of get scared and stuff like that because i play kind of some horror games and obviously have a blast with friends so yeah anyways guys that's gonna be this vlog enjoy the last little bit of this edit and uh have a good weekend